Good evening. I'm Charlotte Meyer, and um, this evening we are going to have the Parks, Recreation, and Education Commission meeting, and I'm pleased to be able to call it to order. We will have uh, begin with a roll call vote of the commissioners. Please uh, say your name and uh, your and you are here. Laurel, we'll start with you. Uh, Laurel Ford, and I am present. Brad. Brad Weissman, present. Megan. Megan Gafari, present. Okay. I don't see anybody else. Let me see. Oh, Stephanie. Yes. Hi, Stephanie Williams, present. Good. Julie. Julie Elkiner, present. And Heath. Yes, hello. Hello, everyone. Present. Great. Uh, did I forget anybody? We have also Kimberly Post is joining us, and so is Marty Hall, our director. So let's begin with a Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, will you please stand? I guess we stand and join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, please stand. I am standing. I always stand. <laughs> uh, ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, the to the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America. America. America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible liberty, liberty, and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, good. All right, let's put the gallery view back on. Gallery view. Okay. All right. Uh, may I have a motion, please, to uh, approve the agenda? I move that we approve the agenda. Laurel Ford. Who said second? I second, Megan Gafari. Oh, Megan, thank you. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. No. Aye. Oh, you oh, okay. So it sounds like it was passed unanimously. Okay, the agenda has been approved. Okay. Um, now we are looking at the approval of the pre-commission minutes for April 12th, 2021. Uh, is there a motion to please uh, uh, approve those minutes? So moved, Julie okay. Elginer. Thank you, Julie. And, and I'll second. second, Stephanie Williams. Great. Um, I'd like to um, take a vote now. Uh, let's take a roll call vote. Uh, Oh, nah. Let's just vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed? Nobody's opposed. They passed. They passed unanimously. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, announcements and introductions. Uh, does anybody have any announcements or introductions? Do we have any cards from the public? Oral communications? No. Nope. Nothing. Okay. Um, before I begin, I would like to just say a few opening remarks very briefly. Um, uh, we've, we haven't had a meeting in three months and a lot has happened in our city in the last year. And we are finally on the cusp of reopening our city. And I know we're all waiting to have this happen. Um, our businesses, our schools, our summer camps, our restaurants, our movie theaters, and the city recreational programs will be in full swing soon, and I, it's not too soon for me. Um, today's meeting, I've looked at the agenda, is going to be a unique meeting like no other the PRE has ever had. Marty Hall, I thank you. You are our acting director, and I know how hard you've worked with a dedicated, experienced staff to begin reinstating all the recreational amenities the city has to offer. After a year of social isolation, it is the department's efforts that will bring our residents back together and will ease our way into a normal future. And this is what the meeting is going to be about, what we're going to be looking forward to enjoying this year coming up. So let's begin with our meeting. First, um, I'd like to, uh, if you have no cards, nobody wishing to address the commission, we'll go to new business. Um, uh, I think Kimberly is here. Kimberly is here, and she is going to be talking about the Senior Center Festival of the Arts program. Is that new business? 
It's on new business. I go through it fast. <laughs> Good evening, Chair Meyer and fellow commissioners. I'm here this evening to share the exciting and new exciting, exciting news that we have to share with you. Last, actually two years ago, October of 2019, the Senior Center put together a festival of the arts. Here's just a quick little, oh no, the little, <laughs> my screen background doesn't show. Anyways, try to, Anyway, so we put on a festival of the arts and it was a, a huge success. We it gathered, you know, all of our volunteers, staff, community, instructors, students, art, and also the local businesses to collaborate to put together a nice um, festival. And we had the Founders Hall filled with artwork. We had the amphitheater filled with artwork. We had the back patio area uh, with hors d'oeuvres and we had wine and it was just kind of a nice way to gather the community and our students and our instructors and just have a nice, um, I just brought kind of everybody together. Um, and so we, it was very successful. We planned on doing it in 2020 uh, before COVID. <laughs> uh, so we do have, you know, plans to hopefully maybe not this year, um, maybe, but then, you know, for sure the following year. But we we are part of the National uh, National Council on Aging, and we have the National Institute of Senior Centers, who have a award um, ceremony every year where you can submit um, your program. So they have a, a an excellence awards program. So we submit every year, and this year we submitted for the Festival of the Arts, and to our surprise, we won. So we're very excited. And I was going to show you our reward, but let me just try to remove my, my background. Let's see. Do no background. Okay. So maybe that, so now you can see. So here's our, so we're actually going to be putting this on our uh, back wall. So here's our certificate. So we'll be nice and proud. So that'll be displayed the three foot by four foot display when you walk in the senior center. And that'll be kind of a, a permanent fixture until maybe we, we haven't really received the reward from the National Institute of Senior Centers, but that's, we're so excited that we want to, you know, scream and share our, our excitement with everybody as soon as you walk in. Um, so here's that, uh, the pamphlet that we put together last year, and it kind of has, you know, nice, all of our sponsors and all the artists on the back. Um, it was really a really spectacular event. So um, and the award was, you know, it has to be something that could be duplicated and we submitted kind of the how to's and, you know, kind of everything that went into it so that hopefully other senior centers could replicate it. So just wanted to share our excitement with you. We're very excited. And, uh, if anyone has any questions, I could, uh, answer them. I just want to add my congratulations. I think it was a wonderful event and uh, congratulations on winning first place. Thank you. We're very excited. We, the, the, the excitement still continues. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> so thank you all. Uh, Kimberly, I just want to say one thing. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to give a shout out to a couple of people. This event took the work of a lot of people, a lot of volunteers, but two people really, really distinguished themselves. One was Rick Young, Rick Young, who was our volunteer of the year. Uh, he put in countless hours. He worked his heart out to get all, everything set up and to organize everything. And then the application, which was a very lengthy, complicated process, uh, was written uh, and organized with by a team of people uh, uh, in the Savvy Seniors by Laura Weishauer, who is now our co-chair of our steering committee. There's the team. Was, There's the winning team right there. Oh, there they are. Okay. <laughs> there they are. So, uh, and, and Rick is right in the middle. <laughs> and, uh, and there are a lot of people who made this happen. And without your support, oh, good. Okay. And without your support and encouragement, uh, we would not have realized this wonderful uh, accomplishment. So Excellent. thank you. And thank you to the team and to all the wonderful people who helped make it happen. It took a village, 100%. This took a village. And there were two, <laughs> yes. And there were, yes. And I heard there were 250 people in attendance. Yes, and a so, lot, a lot of volunteer time. So yes, yes. definitely. Yes. So thanks to everybody. Great.
Thank you very much, Kim. Okay. We will go on now to uh, an overview of the Community Services Department programming as we transition into the proposed 100% reopening on June 15th, 2021. And I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Director Marty Hall. Hello, everyone. Uh, so good to see you again, Chair Meyer and the commissioners. Uh, it's kind of an exciting day, as I'm sure all of you are aware of uh, us coming out of our COVID-19 restrictions. And uh, today, I did get the uh, current LA County guidelines uh, for opening our programming for uh, youth, teens, and adults, and seniors. Um, some of the biggest uh, Highlights of that, the physical distancing uh, requirements uh, are being removed and capacity limitations are being removed in our, in our programs. So uh, with that, uh, we, will, we'll, we will be able to be at full capacity uh, for, for an example, at the Tennis and Swim Center Aquas, Aquafit. Uh, we can do full capacity in our spin classes at the Tennis and Swim Center, uh, full capacity uh, at our youth programs uh, and classes in the parks uh, and even indoors. Uh, so the senior center will be one that it, we're still gonna phase in. We're gonna still stay with uh, the phasing uh, system that Kimberly has put together. Uh, it will open up on June 21st. Uh, phase two will probably get moved up into earlier part of July, but we're gonna take it slow with our senior population and make sure we're doing everything correctly and safely still that we feel comfortable with. And Kimberly and I will be speaking with the advisory board to get their input and their suggestions uh, in regards to the senior center. Uh, masks are not gonna be required for uh, our programs for anybody that is vac fully vaccinated. Uh, that's the other big one we've been getting a lot of questions on. So uh, if you are taking a, uh, a class at the Tennis and Swim, if you're taking a class, uh, you know, uh, at the uh, at De Anza, if you're fully vaccinated, you do not have to. This also includes our youth sports. Uh, youth sports is not required to, uh, to wear a mask while participating. Uh, we are tentatively going to keep uh, masks while they're sitting on the bench and with the coaches if they're not uh, in the first week or so. Uh, and, and just kind of vet that a little bit to be a little on the safe side for an extra week or so uh, to make sure there's no changes in regards to LA County Health. Uh, the other programming that's kind of good, I did have the opportunity to meet with our uh, programming committee uh, about a few weeks ago. And they, uh, one of the biggest things that they want to do is they want to bring programming into the middle schools, uh, which is a fantastic idea. So after school programming, uh, we're looking at uh, doing some art uh, classes right after school. We're looking at uh, bringing in the United States Youth Volleyball League to do some, uh, some volleyball, could be, it could be part of a league part or it could be more of a, uh, a skills uh, assessment for the, for the kids and things. Uh, so we're, we are trying to work, look, side, look outside the box uh, of things we have been missing possibly. So uh, they are also going to be reviewing all our programs, uh, the good and the bad and, and come back and uh, make some other suggestions to us. So uh, exciting times, we're moving ahead and we're gonna get every, everybody back uh, I know the kids are going to be happy. I know the adults are going to be happy. And uh, I hopefully all you guys are, are, healthy, are happy and ready to go with this too. So um, I'm available for questions or anybody can make any comments they want, Chair Meyer. Okay. Anybody have any comments or questions? I guess I just want to add that um, uh, Marty, I know has done a fabulous job of, of getting this all organized. It's been a, certainly a challenging year. And um, all the heads of the departments I know have worked very closely with him. And I want to congratulate you on reaching this pinnacle of <laughs> you know, the cusp of us getting back to normal. So thank you for all your efforts. 
I have a question. Totally, I'll honestly say it is a fully team effort, uh, and it's just not uh, not uh, my department. It's all departments uh, working together to try and to bring this back. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> you said that people that are vaccinated will not have to wear a mask, but I assume under the guidelines, you're not asking people whether to prove that they're vaccinated. Is that right? That is correct. We were given three options uh, to do. Uh, one option was to go on the honor system. Uh, another option that we could enforce and require masks. We have that option to do that no matter what. And the third was to ask uh, for proof of vaccination. Um, after consultation with a number of people, we thought that the best thing to start with would be on the uh, on the honor system because I don't want to put some of our young staff in a situation where they have to try to enforce uh, the guidelines and, and get in an argument and things like that. So uh, that's the way we're heading at the moment. Uh, but obviously, you know, things could possibly change if if need be. And, and again, that does not, uh, at the moment, uh, there's been no discussion in regards to the senior center side yet. Okay. Thank you. And thank you for all that you do, Marty. Thank you. I appreciate you. Um, I want to just follow up with that. I know both Trish and Marty, you've been incredible. Um, so just thank you. You answer our emails so quickly. And I know how hard you're working and how crazy it is to run parks, rec, and education from your kitchens and houses and dining rooms. And um, I just, getting to be at that meeting with Acting Director Hall was really wonderful as a, as a member of the, um, oh, now I forgot the word, programming committee. And just, I hope you know how grateful everyone is in the city for your hard work, especially both. I know it's team effort and all that. I'm not taking away from anyone at the city, but um, both Marty and Trish, you guys have just been wonderful. I concur. I concur. Um, yeah. Um, there are so many different facilities uh, that Marty has oversight of and so many balls that are juggling in the air at the same time. I mean, this is the job of microman, of, of being able to just, oh, Julie, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. I'm trying to navigate this on my phone. The role, all the roles that we play. Um, I just wanted to um, make one quick comment, which is that from a public health standpoint, the last data that I saw was that Calabasas was sitting at around the 70% vaccination rate level. So that is not to say that we should let our guard down. And I would encourage everyone, you know, in your communications to continue to encourage people who are eligible to receive the vaccine. One of the biggest ways that we can protect our youth that are not eligible to get the vaccine yet is for all of those who are eligible to in fact be fully vaccinated. And I was quoted in the LA Times um, with some data on that recently. So I just wanted to let all of you know that in your individual conversations, to the extent you feel comfortable, or if you wanna reach out to me with any of those kinds of questions, I'm happy to put on my public health hat and, uh, and bring that to the table. Julie, that is such a uh, wonderful contribution. And I will be contacting you uh, to get more information because I think the situation at the senior center is unique. It's different than uh, going to the market. It's different than going to the library. This is probably the most vulnerable population that we have. And so I just wanna make sure that we're not only reopening for to have a good time and to to reconnect and, and the social isolation, but we're opening as safely as we possibly can. So I appreciate your offering to give us the input that we need. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? No? Okay. Well, Marty, thank you for that wonderful news. It's very encouraging. Uh, next, uh, we're gonna talk about oh, our summer events. This is another ball that you're juggling. <laughs> Marty, I'm gonna turn it over to Marty and these are our post pandemic restrictions discussing our summer events for 2021. Uh, good evening again, uh, Chair Meyer and, and commissioners. Uh, this is the other uh, part of the puzzle that we have is our, our summer events. 
Uh, and I'll even say our fall events. Uh, this is exciting news. Uh, the first one uh, we will be having is our 4th of July fireworks show with Big Bad Voodoo Daddy. Uh, originally, I had planned uh, this around COVID. Uh, I was going to there, uh, have pods for uh, families and uh, keep social distance distancing uh, in play. Uh, however, that is no longer required. Uh, we will not have to do that. We will probably still recommend that. Uh, I, I look to be on the safe side in regards to that event. Um, I made a, uh, a promise to the school district originally that I, that I was going to sell only about half the tickets, 1800. I'm still gonna honor that. Uh, I do not want to uh, I'm going to say overpack or bring in a lot of people into a situation and feel uncomfortable with that. Uh, we will be having, we will be posting all the signs in regards to um, unvaccinated people would, will not have to wear masks. And if you are uh, unvaccinated, please wear a mask. We're going to suggest that we'll have some masks there for people who would like to have them. Um, so it's going to be a very, a, a very good evening in regards to that with the changes. Um, I do, uh, I'm waiting uh, for the high school uh, booster clubs to get back to me to see if they possibly, now with the new restrictions that they would like to open up their snack bar. So that'll be the only addition that possibly could be happening for them to, to raise some money uh, with that. Um, also moving just on a little bit, uh, you know, I'm just gonna, our summer concerts, uh, the three at the lake, uh, they will also not have any restrictions in regards to, uh, social distancing, uh, and it'll have the same mass restrictions that we will be posting unless that does change. Uh, and finally, uh, it's probably the best one of them all is it, it's really good news for the, for the fall for the pumpkin festival. Uh, that'll make it a, a little bit easier to uh, put that program together. Uh, we were really worried about the, the restrictions that could be on with that event. Uh, you know, we have a little, uh, we have a little staffing issue in regards to that possibility, but uh, I'm confident we will work through that. Uh, I did have the uh, pleasure to, uh, to meet uh, also with our programming committee and uh, they were outstanding. I've been volunteered to help out for anything possible. Uh, came up with some really nice programming ideas. They are reviewing all our, our events uh, for, to make suggestions and, and changes. I, I, I challenge them to, to use their vision to come up with new items, new things, and make changes to the things for we, uh, we don't get uh, uh, stale and have the same exact event every year. Uh, you know, one of the events I'll just throw out, and I'll, I'll allow them to, to jump in if they want to say anything, was uh, a bicycle event, which I thought was really unique and things like that in the city. So uh, where the families and, and the individuals could uh, go on a little uh, trail around the city and, and things like that. So that was very unique for an outside event. Uh, I look forward to kind of working with, uh, with Brad on that one a little extra. And uh, I'll turn it back over to uh, my programming committee, Julie and Brad, if they would want to, want to jump in with any, uh, any comments. Julie? Yep. Okay. Julie, do you? Uh, sure. I was just pulling up my notes, actually. <clears throat> so we we, um, Brad and I are on the events committee and um, had a wonderful discussion with Marty about three weeks ago. Um, both of us came with um, a series of suggestions for potential events. I would say that, and you know, not only did we offer them up, but as Marty was saying, you know, we suggested that we are welcome to help vet some of these ideas. Uh, you know, some of the uh, discussion that we were that we were having was really centered around. Um, what we can do to utilize the, um, the hopefully soon to be regenerated Agora Calabasas Community Center because it's such a wonderful venue. And to the extent that we can, um, you, that we can secure the funding, revitalize that area, and then in fact, put some programming there. So um, as, as Marty suggested, Brad had some suggestions. I had some suggestions, including things like um, a, a, and Brad can speak more about it, but um, a bicycling event, we talked about a car rally, we talked about um, a touch a truck event to try to target those families that um, have young children 
Those have been very successful events in Santa Monica and Thousand Oaks that have kind of gone away. Um, you know, so more to come on that, and I'll let Brad comment as well, but um, we want to not only evaluate our current events, but to think about um, and to bring forward suggestions for new events. Very well said. So yeah, they, uh, the whole bicycle uh, uh, idea came from their Ciclavia that they do every year in Los Angeles. Well, this would be a, a uh, shaved down version of that for the city of Calabasas. Maybe people could meet at Peddler's Fork, which is a, a bike oriented restaurant, take a, some kind of a tour through Calabasas, come back, you know, meet their, com their fellow community members. Maybe there could be some kind of fundraising involved with it. And then the other idea with the car rally is, you know, living in this community, there's some people that have some pretty uh, highfalutin cars, some exotic uh, Lamborghinis and Ferraris and Rolls Royces. And perhaps we can uh, meet at the new community center when it reopens and have a car rally, maybe get LA County Sheriff to uh, open up Mulholland Highway for a, for a tour that the cars can take and then come back uh, to the community center, have some refreshments, mingle. Again, maybe we can incorporate some kind of fundraising into it. Uh, just some, some new life to the things that we're already doing just to augment uh, you know, community involvement, essentially. The other thing that I'll just add is that um, we discussed really utilizing the Mayor's Youth Council to promote um, as many of our events as possible because they are part of the constituency that both can attend the events, but also includes individuals that are 14 through 19. They are social media savvy. They are already promoting City of, Los um, City of uh, Calabasas events. And our student commissioner on this council, it also sits on that. And so to the extent we can, um, partner with the Mayor's Youth Council to really promote our events. Uh, are we okay here? Um, Julie, I, uh, Julie, I think we lost you a little bit at the end. Uh, are oh. you done? Are you complete? Have you finished or do you yep, want to add I'm more? Done. I I keep putting myself on mute as soon as I'm done, just so oh, you can hear all. Oh, I, I didn't. I didn't know that. Okay. Uh, well, this sounds unbelievable. This is so fantastic. It's like a shot of penicillin to our commission, and I'm thrilled to hear that there's so many good ideas, and that uh, we have a, a director who's willing to, or who's excited, as excited as we are, to make these uh, these ideas a reality for our community. Um, thank you. That was fantastic. Um, okay. Uh, does anybody have anything, they, any questions about what we just heard or any suggestions or any, any input at all? No? Okay. Fantastic. All right. Uh, the next thing is uh, to select a date for the commissioners and staff to tour the city's parks and recreation facilities. This is a fantastic idea, Marty. It sounds like something you put together and uh, I think it's wonderful. I'd love to do that. Yes, uh, Commissioner, uh, Chair uh, Meyer. Um, this is something that I had, uh, I had done previously in another city and I, I wanted to get back, uh, back to here and have uh, the commissioners go with me uh, to tour actually all our facilities. Uh, what this does is allow uh, new commissioners uh, to see the, the facilities and, and the, the condition they are and the programming that we do at each each location. Um, since the Wilsley fire, we you know we had some damage in some of our parks, so you'll be able to have the opportunity to see, uh, uh, for an example, Grape Arbor Park, if you haven't been out there, how that got uh, rebuilt. Uh, I can give you a little bit of the history of that as we're there. Um, but what I really want for you all on these uh, on this tour, as we take the, we'll be in the trolley or we'll be in a, one of the shuttles and we'll stop and uh, I'll explain the programming that goes on there, but I want you to use your visions and, and, and just have an open discussion of what are the programming we can do there. 
Uh, also, uh, some of our playgrounds uh, are getting a little old. Some of the playground equipment needs to be replaced. Um, so I want to kind of discuss that with you. I want you all to, uh, you know, when we're done with this tour, I want to send you some information about um, other kind of uh, playground equipment we might be able to put in there uh, to replace that. You know, I, I'm going to rely on all of you for your your knowledge and your uh, your input into uh, making our parks uh, really back to being prestige. Uh, that the the public wants. I, I we're we're in Calabasas, and, and I want us to be have the best parks uh, throughout Southern California. So um, that's kind of the plan. So what I'm asking for you to do is come up uh, if you can, hopefully tonight, come up with a. Uh, it can be a, any day during the week. It can be a weekend. Is there's no problem with that. Uh, and I would say, I would suggest we probably do it in. Uh, in late July or, or August would even be better. So that's my only suggestion to you. And I'll turn it back to Chair Meyer to see if she can come up with a, with a date with everybody. Um, I do, Chair are we- Chair Meyer. <laughs> Hello, yes, Laurel. Oh yes, it, well, let's start with Laurel and then Julie. Yes, I would like to suggest a Sunday if that works. Um, I think it's a day when maybe mm -hmm. most people don't have a lot of conflicts or not working or whatever. Um, and that might work well. So that just throw that one out and uh, see if that works. I, I would be happy with that. Julie, did you want to say something? Uh, the only thing I was going to suggest is um, perhaps we utilize a technology like a doodle or a scheduled meeting where um, we put out there a variety of dates and then we vote electronically. We just go ahead and put in our availability for those dates. We could choose up to 10 different dates or as many as we wanted to. And then each of us could go on and just respond after looking at our calendars just to help expedite the meeting. Uh, that was gonna be my suggestion. But I think for us Sunday would be terrific if we could, but. I, I would, um... I, I would, I think August is, uh, uh, that is probably a good month, but I think planning now for something in August is a little ways off. I would like to wait until maybe the middle of July if we're going to choose a date in August because things come up. Uh, yeah, I, I personally am pretty booked in August. Um, oh, okay. So if we're going to pick a Sunday in August, I would, I mean, I don't have yeah. to drive the bus, but uh, <laughs> I'm happy, July, a, I'm happy to put a doodle together and just list like the Sundays at the end of July and beginning of August, maybe, and then send it to y'all. Does that work? That would be fine with me. Sorry, Chair Meyer. I just want to be able to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want you to go. You're, you're... I, I think that would be fantastic. Yeah. I'll be honest to say that would be great, uh, you know, to put out a few Sundays in regards uh, obviously, you know, it's going to be warm. Uh, you know, a lot of people have church and thing in the morning. So something maybe in the, we could go late afternoon if we want to, you know, uh, three to five or, or whatever works for everybody, but I'll let you, uh, the commission kind of pick that time and I am good on all, all dates on Sunday. So that will be fine. For me, um, the doodle sounds like a great idea. The only July Sunday I'm here is July 31st though. I have to agree that was a good idea. Sorry, Chair Meyer. I was just going to say that was a great idea just to wait another uh, a little longer down the road here to because people are going to start planning some of their vacations and things like that. And the the one thing I don't want to happen is is we we pick this date and it interrupts somebody's vacation. You know, it, we've all been waiting to go on vacation with our families and things like that. And that is the utmost importance that uh, that family life is first. So. So what do you? suggesting marty that we just put this uh on the back burner for maybe a month and then uh send out an email with some dates or how would you, what do you i think we could I, i'm going to say uh stephanie had a good idea i think i'm following her that we could actually put out the uh, some tentative dates get a just a rough idea right now but we won't finalize the date until probably let's wait till after july 4th something like okay. that to make sure give everybody enough time to to really talk with their families if they're going to go away and uh you know I, i'll be honest to say if if 
if some uh, someone can't not make it, I would be glad personally to uh, go with them uh, on a private little tour around and, and, and review everything with them for they can be up to speed with everything also. Okay. All right. So we're going to, so then uh, I, the consensus, it sounds like is we're going to do this and we're going to come up with some tentative dates and uh, the end of July or maybe the beginning of August. Okay. All right. And, uh, All right, and, be, just, and it will probably, uh, yes, Julie. I don't mean to uh, put a wrench in it, but I do want to say for anyone with kids, um, a potential option is to wait until early September until the kids are back in school and presumably people would be back in, you know, here regularly in, in a regular schedule. So I wanted to just put that out there as a potential. And Stephanie, as you're drafting your doodle, perhaps you could include some of those dates as well. Okay. So we'll have a we'll have a whole smorgasbord of dates to choose from, and um, I think that's a good that's a very good suggestion as well. Okay, all right. So I think we're ready to move ahead with our committee reports, unless there's any more discussion about this. No. Nope? Okay. The Community um, Center Alliance Joint Powers Authority. Uh, oh, did you want to say something? I, I just have a question um, because I was ill for the last meeting. I have oh. to join a committee. Um, when should I address that? Does it need to be public or do I need to do it as an email? Um, well, I have a, get my, I have the list of the committees. Um, why don't we do that? Well, why don't we, I don't know. I, Chair, uh, Chair Meyer, I can, uh, I'll reach out, I'll reach out tomorrow uh, and, and, and yeah. uh, talk to commissioner uh, about uh, her selection on uh, whatever committee she would like to be on. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. So we're going to move ahead with our committee reports. Community Center Alliance Joint Powers Authority. Um, I think who's that. I think that's going to be me. I don't think Keith really, uh, unless he, the commissioner uh, has anything he wants to say in <laughs> regards to it. Uh, no, actually, I, I'm interested in hearing what's going on there, Marty. So thank you. All right. Okay. Um, we actually had a meeting today uh, uh, about the budget and things uh, for the uh, for the center. But currently, this is where we stand. Uh, the uh, JPA board did vote to uh, allow Calabasas, the city of Calabasas, to repair the roof. Uh, and make some other minor improvements to the facility. So uh, we do have that, uh, we are allowed to do that. The, uh, the council has indicated they are, they are wanting us to take the lead on the roof. Um, this Wednesday, we're gonna be uh, meeting with uh, one of our engineers, uh, a company that is going to come out, they're going to inspect the roof uh, and they are uh, uh, going to go back and then make their recommendations uh, for what the cost, they anticipate the cost of the roof will be and put an RFP together for we can put that out uh, to bid. Um, this roof project uh, has kind of expanded. We originally, the roof was only gonna be repaired uh, on the basketball court side and we were looking somewhere just roughly and a little over a half a million dollars for that. But uh, we do feel that the other uh, portions of the roof do need uh, repair also, uh, what we're reading and what we're seeing. So we did have the contractor who did the original uh, estimate come out and uh, he went up, up uh, on the community center and rebid the roof. Uh, currently it's looking like it's gonna be around a million dollars uh, our community services director has looked at a couple items and, and has some concerns from a report that uh, we might have to have up to a half a million dollars more. So it could be 1.5 million. Uh, there's the concern is when we take the entire roof off, uh, there's a lot of wood that is going to be exposed. That wood has been, has been uh, wet for quite a long time. So there might be some replacements uh, extra costs that are gonna come in with that besides possibly some of the wiring of the facility might need some repair also. 
Um, so the contingency is to, uh, to add a, a possibly up to a half million dollars and hopefully we don't have to spend it, but we, we may have to in regards to get that roof fully compared, uh, repaired. Um, it looks like the, we probably will not be able to go out to an RFP until August, around August 1st, somewhere, hopefully. Uh, we got to go probably at least 30 days on that. We get that back uh, in September. So construction, realistically, I, I don't see starting until late October, early November on the facility. So uh, pretty much the facility will be closed for uh, for 2021 with a hopeful and opening somewhere, I'm going to say February, between February and March of 22. Uh, obviously, if we do not have a uh, a rainy season, uh, that would move it up the timing uh, for a little bit sooner. But uh, that's sort of where we're standing in regards to the facility. Uh, I know the city of Agora uh, Council would like to have a, uh, an opening plan, uh, you know, to uh, see what, uh, if we can bring the facility back uh, to be operational without losing, uh, uh, losing money. Uh, so uh, Community Center uh, Brink and I will be getting together down the road uh, to come up with a, a plan for a possible reopening. Uh, that includes staffing and uh, some of the other items there uh, in regards to the facility. Personally, you know, I, I do not see the uh, facility coming back at the same uh, staff levels as we had previously, uh, but uh, we will try to put a plan together and and see if, how close we can get to, uh, to, I'd say, a break-even point uh, with the facility. There are some ideas that we have on the, have been thinking about and discussing, and uh, uh, I'd be glad to share that with the pre when we get to that level. But uh, the number one priority is, is to get this roof going, and uh, which is just causing the delay right now. So that's where we are with the community center. Um, I'll be glad to answer any questions if anybody has any. Julie. Uh, yes, Marty, I just had one quick question. Can you remind me of the funding source, that, the revenue source for that? I, I feel like I read that the city received a grant, but I just wanted to clarify that for my own education. There is a grant currently with the LA County and it's $166,000. Uh, we were able to get that extended. So long as we, uh, want, long as we start the project uh, basically this year, uh, we will be uh, reimbursed $166,000. Now, the city of Agora, I believe, has is, is, is put in, and I don't know the details of this uh, that much, but they've, they've asked, uh, uh, applied for another million-dollar grant. Uh, so there is the potential that uh, the center could be awarded another million dollars. Uh, that would uh, really help a lot and. Uh, at least the city of Calabasas possibly possibly recru recouping some of the costs that uh, that we we putting in there. Uh, it is it is the city of Calabasas is going into this without without any guarantee that the money could be uh, given back to them. Uh, but I do believe the uh, the JPA board would uh, would take a strong look at uh, reimbursing the city for the repairs of, on that. Uh, I do believe we got a grant of four hundred fifty thousand dollars from the Mountains Restoration Trust. Uh, yes, uh, that is that is a different uh, grant. I did. I'm sorry, I did forget that. Uh, we did get about a co all, close to a half a million dollars to. That is for the generator uh, in the facility. Uh, is to turn the facility into an uh, a regional EOC in case of a, a major fire, earthquake, something like that. Uh, that it could be used for that. It also could be used by uh, a city that uh, was hit uh, dramatically and, and, and lost their EOC facilities. They could use the uh, the community center for that. So, uh, beside you know uh, the the uh, generator won't use up all the money. So we'll be able to. One of the ideas, and we'll we'll be looking at that's uh, that was suggested. And I don't know if it can be used is to possibly when we redo the roof is to put solar into the into the roof 
and uh, to help lower the cost in regards to that. So uh, as I get more information, as we get closer to that grant to finding if it, uh, we're actually going to, to get that. Uh, and I think we'll hopefully hear something by September, I'm hoping. Uh, I'll be glad to report back to you on that. Okay. Any more questions? No, thanks, Marty. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, Senior Center. Oh, I'm up. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, uh, the Senior Center has been very busy. Uh, we have for the registration for our next uh, classes, uh, classes, we have over 1,000 signups. So that's very exciting. Um, let me go through my list here. I've got all these. We have started a new club, an interest club called the Caring Calabasas Club. This is an opportunity for us to harness all the goodwill that this community has to offer and focus on helping those who aren't as fortunate as we are. Uh, we've had a, a drive to raise um, glasses uh, right now. We're, we're collecting used glasses and cases from June 1st through the 30th. And there is a box at the senior center. We've collected gently used shoes. We've had four, over 4,000 pairs of shoes for the homeless that we were able to contribute. Yes, 4,000. You, you looked up, Heath, at 4,000. That's a lot of shoes. Um, and uh, so we are, we, are having, uh, we have a program called Operation Gratitude, where we are making cards and scarves for our men and women in uniform overseas. And we are uh, finding that the yarn is pouring into our senior centers for us to knit these scarves. A lot of it is to make sure that our, our, our service people overseas are not alone. They don't feel like we have forgotten them. And we appreciate what they've um, they do for our country. Um, we are also um, going to have our. Uh, we are also going to have our grand reopening, our five-year reopening, not just to have the classes, but a party uh, on Friday, January twenty-fifth, from two to four. We'll invite, we're inviting everybody to come, and we're going to have tables out with the displays of what we've done, what we hope to do in the future, and we're going to. Um, for the have tours of our senior center and um, and that we're going to be having ice cream bars handed out. So it's going to be a wonderful positive event for the community to celebrate our five year anniversary. Um, okay, let me keep going. I've got more flyers here to go through. Um, oh, okay. Our excursion committee uh, is having a wonderful fundraiser, uh, participating in a fundraiser to restore Paramount Ranch, which was destroyed during the fire. And uh, it's going to be Saturday, July 10th. And um, it's going to be a, you come early to the park. There's gonna be a picnic on the green, live entertainment, and a Buddy Keaton movie. It's gonna be $30 a car, but then again, I think it was raised to 40. So I'll have to look at that, but it's still, it's a, it's a co-car. And um, it's a bring your own picnic dinner. And there's going to be free popcorn uh, with a donation optional and a tour of the ranch. Um, this ranch has a lot of uh, history in the entertainment industry. And there are people in my own family who have had a relationship with the, with the, with the, uh, with the, um, with the ranch uh, through their experiences working in the entertainment industry. So I'm personally affected by losing this wonderful asset to our community. Um, let's see what else we've got here. <laughs> oh, it is forty dollars. It was raised. I've got two flyers, one with thirty and one with forty. I have a feeling it's going to be forty. Um, I think that's it. One more thing that we do have going on, I'd like to share with the with the, um, the community at large, is we are going to be offering tech help in person. Uh, we have always had a, we've had a tech help program before the senior center even opened that was manned by students earning community service credit at our high schools. And um, the kids, we've been receiving phone calls now that they've heard that the senior center is actually opening and they wanna come back. Uh, one of our star students, of course, was Stephanie Williams' son. He, uh, he worked at our arts as tech help and he had a big following of seniors that would come in and ask for him. 
So uh, I, I thought I wanted to just mention one thing. The kids who participate in the program get as much out of it, learning to relate to seniors and how to teach somebody how to learn and have patience uh, as the seniors do learning, improving their technology skills. So it's a two-way street there. And plus they do get the community service hours that is required for graduation. Um, so um, that's about it. Um, oh, our next steering committee meeting is going to be August 4th. There are two governance bodies at the senior center. One is our advisory board, which is appointed by the city council, and that consists of seven people. And the other is the steering committee. And we meet, our next meeting is on August 4th and Wednesday from three to five. And anyone can come to this meeting and learn more about the senior center and provide input and share their ideas because we are an idea organization. We love new ideas and that's how we build our programs. So um, I hope you will come and learn more about it and participate. Uh, you don't have to volunteer just to show up and listen and learn and you are all welcome. So that's my report for this from the Senior Center. Let's go on. Does anybody have any questions that they would like to ask about the Senior Center? No? Okay. Next, we're going to go on to our director's report about the sports court at Juan Batista de Anza Park. Thank you again, Chair Meyer and Commissioners. Uh, I, I put this on just to uh, kind of give you an update of, uh, of the sport court at De Anza. Uh, currently, for a number of years, we've had uh, Tri-Valley Tri Roller Hockey out there uh, conducting leagues. Uh, unfortunately, uh, as of July 30th, Tri-Valley Roller Hockey is... Uh, is going to be no longer. Uh, Ned, uh, who's been running the program for numerous years, does a fantastic job out there with this hockey program, is is, is retiring. So um, that will be uh, that will be a program that is missed by a, a number of individuals who enjoy playing hockey. Uh, I have had several phone calls from individuals asking what uh, what are we going to do about hockey. Uh, I will be meeting with staff in the month of June to discuss. Uh, not just hockey, but possibly pickleball and other options that we may be able to use on the sport court. But I do want the, the hockey people, at least the, the pickup people to know uh, that there will always be some sort of time that we will, will have for hockey. There might not be a hockey league, but there will be at least uh, some time for, uh, for you to pick up by pickup hockey uh, because that's important no matter what the size of a, of a, of a sport is, uh, if there's, you know, 20 pick people that want to play hockey, that's those 20 are just important as the, as the maybe 40 other people that want to play basketball and things like that. We want to service our entire community in regards to that court. So, uh, uh, I will be asking, uh, the people that have called me, uh, I will reach back out to them. I'm keeping kind of a list of their names to get their opinions. Uh, you know, who knows, maybe a, uh, a league will, will present its opportunity to come in for a day. It'll ne it probably will never go back to exactly the way it was uh, as many nights as it was. Uh, but we will, uh, we will have that discussion openly with the, with people uh, in regards to the sport court. So I just kind of wanted to give you a, an update in regards to that. Uh, the other part of it right now, uh, the people might say, why is there some more, more hockey out there? We've had our youth basketball uh, out there uh, practicing and we've been playing our games out there. Uh, but luckily enough with this change um, in the uh, COVID LA County high, uh, guidelines, uh, we are looking to move all our youth uh, basketball pro programs back inside. So that's gonna open up more time for, uh, for people to come out and, and, and skate and do a little hockey uh, if, if they choose to, so. Uh, I know the kids are going to be excited to get back indoors and get out of this, especially with this weekend coming. It's supposed to be uh, well into, uh, you know, a hundred plus. I, I don't think, uh, I don't think that would be very safe for the kids to be out there in that heat, but a, a gymnasium would be a little bit cooler for them. And, and safety is always our, uh, the first thing we look at with not just our youth, but our adults also. So uh, that's the update on the sport court for the moment. If anybody has any questions, I would be glad uh, once again to answer any questions. Anybody have any questions about the sports court? 
I, I hope that we can come up with some ideas to make great use of that real estate. Uh, it's just, it shouldn't sit fallow. We should really be using it for something. That's okay. Um, future agenda item requests. Well, nobody has any ideas on what we should be looking at for our next meeting. Well, I, nobody. Well, I hope that we will continue to uh, have a report from the programming committee, from the event committee, uh, the community center alliance, the senior center, um, and maybe there's more that we can uh, include. We have, uh, and I think that's about it. And. Um. I'm going to jump in one last thing just uh, uh, back on uh, our when we do our just for everybody knows when we uh, when we do our uh, park tour, I just wanted to remind you that will be a, an actual meeting when we do that we will be noticing the public so anybody in the public who would want to go on the tour with us could so uh, that will be a notice that will be going out and also just uh, a re to let you know probably our next meeting that we have uh, in September. Uh, we will be back in council chambers in person. So uh, we will not be going back uh, with, uh, with, with Zoom. Uh, the council is looking to start having uh, their council meetings in, the, in August in person. So uh, plan, on, uh, plan on our September one to be in person. There's, there's one request that I would like to be considered. We have at the Senior Center a fabulous newsletter it includes a lot of information about the events in the city. If there's any way that we could uh, have a way to communicate to the rest of the city that this newsletter is available, maybe uh, scroll it on CTV and with a, a link or with a, how to sign up to get the Senior Center newsletter. I think it would be a valuable, uh, a valuable piece of information for our residents. Uh, our last newsletter had so much information that we've discussed um, with the, with the uh, fireworks, with the lake concerts, um, and I just think it'd be another way for information to be communicated. And we, we send out many, many of these by email, and that's how they would get them. Okay, so that's my suggestion. Anybody else? Okay, uh, this was a wonderful meeting. Thank you very much. Um, I would like a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved, Julie Elgina. Thank you, Julie. And is there a second? A second, Brad Weissman. Thank you, Brad. Okay, and all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, okay, passes unanimously. So thank you very much, everybody. And uh, we'll see you in a few months. And I hope the committees continue to meet because that's how things really get done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good thank night. you. Good night. Everyone. Everybody. Good night. <laughs>